If you're writing a qualitative paper or a thesis, then you definitely want to stick around for this video because I'm going to show you exactly how to structure the methodology part of a qualitative research paper. And this is also going to work really well for a chapter of your thesis if you're doing qualitative research. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help university students, PhD students, and researchers regularly publish papers in top journals. And in this video, I want to focus specifically on qualitative research. I've got other videos on the methodology and how to structure it, but in here, we're just going to look at qualitative studies. And this is going to work if you're writing the methodology chapter for your thesis. This is also going to work if you're writing a research paper. The main difference is just really going to be the length of the whole section or the chapter of your thesis, right? So what I'm going to do here first is to show you the overall structure of the methodology section in a qualitative research paper. And then I'll also show you an example so that you can see how it actually works in practice. The first section is going to be about participants. So you need to basically tell us who you studied, right? And how many people were there, who were they, you know, any background information that you collected about these participants needs to go in that participant section. What also needs to go there is what is called sampling techniques. In other words, how did you obtain these participants, right? Did you use random sampling? purposive sampling, there's all sorts of different types of sampling, right? So you need to explain that. Now, imagine you have more than one group of participants. Maybe, you know, your qualitative study was on students and on teachers, right? So, and maybe you use different sampling methods as well for each group of participants. So what, what you want to do is first, you know, present the first group of participants, let's say students, give us background information on them and then tell us how you sampled them, some of the sampling technique, potentially justifying why you use this sampling technique and then move on to the second group, right? And present the second group and the sampling technique for the second group. So it's, it's pretty simple, you know? And don't spend more than like a paragraph per each uh, group of participants. Don't, don't write like 50,000 words on it, right? It should be fairly short and to the point. So that's the first section, participants. Then the second section is going to be about research tools and procedures. Now you don't have to call it research tools and procedures in different fields, the different sort of like customs of like calling of, of the names of the sections. But basically this section is going to be about the research tool or instrument. So if you're doing a qualitative study, you know, maybe you used interviews, maybe you had focus groups, maybe you had some sort of like journals or things like that, right? And you need to then present this tool to us. For example, what type of interview you conducted, semi-structured, structured, how long did they last? Were they online, face-to-face? -face? So you give us background information on the interview itself and on the questions that you asked. That, you know, we asked these types of questions, there were 10 questions, right? Or these were the main topics that we discussed with the participants, right? So you get an idea of the instrument and then you want to present the procedure. How was this uh, instrument or this interview in this case, how did it actually take place? What happened? step by step, you know, maybe there were different phases to the interview. So that would be the second section, research tools and procedures, right? And then the third section needs to be data analysis, right? What do I mean by that? In this section, you're going to tell us how you analyze your qualitative data, meaning you're going to present the data analysis technique, such as grounded theory, uh, you know, thematic analysis, and then explain why it was appropriate and specifically how you used it in this study, right? So it should probably be just like one paragraph as well when you start off by saying exactly which technique was used, let's say grounded theory was used, you can define it. If you want to, in one sentence, you can justify why it was appropriate for your study. And then you want to tell us like, what were the actual steps? It's not enough to tell us we used grounded theory. Okay, but how did you actually use it in your study? That's what we want to know. So you want to tell us step by step what happened, how this data was analyzed. So that's the third section. And really these are the three main, main sections that you must include. Additionally, depending on your type of research, you might also have a separate section on ethical considerations. But really, it would be separate if you're writing a PhD thesis chapter it would be included in the participants where you would have like literally just two sentences about ethical considerations and that's it. 
If you're doing something very, very qualitative, right, where your positionality as a researcher is important, then you would want to include that and you'd want to have one section, probably the first section, where you would talk about your own positionality as a researcher and how potentially it impacted the whole research process, right? So that's an additional element, positionality. If you're writing a thesis, probably not in a research paper, but in a thesis chapter, probably the first section of the methodology chapter will be an explanation of the method, right? So you're using qualitative methodology overall, but which specific type of qualitative methodology are you using? For example, is it an ethnographic study? If it is, what does that actually mean? What is your definition and why is an ethnographic study appropriate for your study, right? So you might want to present that as the very first section of the methodology. You would do that in a research paper only if you're doing a methodology that is perhaps not very common in your field, like a type of qualitative methodology, let's say an ethnography, that maybe has never been used in your field or is used rarely. And as a result, you know, the reviewers would need some justification why this particular qualitative method was applied. Right? So that's the overall structure of a qualitative methodology section in a research paper or in a thesis. Let's dive into a practical example so you can see how this is actually done. So I want to show you a real published qualitative paper so that you can also understand a little bit better how the methodology section in a qualitative paper is actually written. And mind you, the same principles are going to apply to your PhD thesis if you're doing a qualitative um, PhD, but I'm going to show you an example of a research paper. And I chose this one um, because I think it's a, it's a really good example of a qualitative paper. It was written by one of my clients on PhD Accelerator, Edi Furo Ken uh, Jami, who now graduated with her um, PhD. And um, this paper, you can, you can look it up yourself if you just Google the title, is Open Access, available in Sustainability Journal. Um, it's a really good journal um, if you're in that field, but let's dive into the methods, right? So the method starts here and you can see there is a short paragraph in here um, that kind of outlines what's going to happen in the rest of this section. Um, this isn't by obligatory by any means and it kind of depends a little bit on the journal and it also really depends on, you know, how many words you have available because uh, qualitative papers tend to get very long because of the quotes from participants that you need to include. And then research papers have very limited space. So you might not have space to do an introduction like this, but if you do, I'd highly recommend that you have a short introduction to the section. And if you're writing your thesis, you should definitely have a short introduction to the whole methods or methodology section. Now, the first thing that the author does here is to present the theory that was chosen for this study and why this approach is appropriate. Now, this isn't obligatory in a qualitative paper. However, if you feel that the theory that you've chosen is not commonly used in your field or it, it requires like several complicated steps, maybe other researchers in your specific field might not be familiar with this qualitative theory or this qualitative methodology, then it definitely makes sense to introduce it. And what you want to do is define this research approach or theory that you're using and then justify it, right? Uh, say why this approach was appropriate for your study. These are the only things that you have to do. A definition and then justification. Why did you use this qualitative methodology in your specific study? Now, in a paper, this is not obligatory, but if you're doing a thesis, I would definitely include a section like this in which you're going to define your specific qualitative approach and justify. Now, um, the next section is the sampling strategy, right? So in this section, we're going to present how we got the participants. And in addition, we're also going to say who our participants were, right? Whether you first present the sampling strategy and then participants, or first the participants and then the sampling strategy, um, that's not important, both orders are okay, but typically they go in one section, and this section is absolutely obligatory, um, both in a research paper and in a thesis. In this particular paper, it's rather long. Um, it doesn't have to be that long. It all depends, you know, how simple or complicated your sampling strategy 
was, right? So in this case, you know, the, they use several um, different sampling strategies. So they use purposive sampling, right? And then theoretical sampling um, as well. And as a result, we need one paragraph for each sampling strategy. So if you use more than one, then one paragraph for one sampling strategy, another one for another one, right? And first we have a definition, right, of what that sampling strategy is, right? And then we have a um, description of how it actually works, right? And it's the same here, right? We've got the definition and then, you know, how it was used and why it was used. And then after the sampling strategy, we move to presenting the participants, right? Um, so, you know, we talk about the size of the, of the sample. If it's important for your particular design, you want to justify or tell us how you determined that sample size. I mean, if you had 20 participants, how did you come up with the number 20 and why did you have 20 and not 10 and not 50? Right, so we've got an explanation like this. And this is particularly important for this type of qualitative methodology. It might not be important for yours, but if it is, then you should present it. And this is further presented here, right? And then, you know, we've got, we've got more justification for the, for the sample size, and it's also based on previous studies. So if you're wondering, like, you know, what's the appropriate number of participants for my study, you can base it on previous studies that use the same or very similar methodology um, to your study and tackle a very similar research question. And of course, you can also use theory to justify um, your sample size. And then you just present, uh, you know, who these participants um, were, and then more specifically how you approach them, right? So at the beginning of this section, we had like a more, let's say, a more theoretical view of the sampling strategy, right? Theoretical sampling means this and this. It is useful because of X, Y, and Z reason. It was like more theoretical, but you definitely need to tell us how specifically you got the participants. What were the specific steps for you to get the participants, right? So this is, this is the sampling and this is an obligatory section in a research paper and in a thesis. Now, what is good to include or can be good to include is a table in which you tell us a little bit more about who these participants were. You can provide any useful background information about them, right? Um, for example, in this case, it was, it was important to know like which specialism these um, researchers were in, uh, sorry, these engineers, right, their experience and the country they were from because we had two countries and we were comparing two countries, right? Um, so having a table with background information about your participants is very commonly included in this section. Now we move to the data collection stage. So this is the sort of research tools and procedures. Now, one interesting element that was included here is the pilot study. This is not very commonly included in research papers, but is very common in um, the methodology chapter of a PhD thesis, right? So in here, you present a pilot study that was done in order to kind of uh, troubleshoot your real study. And you tell us like step-by-step step what was done and what you learned from that pilot study and how this pilot study led to potential changes in your real study, right? So that's the pilot study part. And then we've got the, the first, uh, the instrument, which is interviews, right? If you have more than one qualitative instrument, then you'll have more than one uh, section or subsection in here, right? And in this section, like what you've got to do is, is you know, define the instrument that you used, right? and provide any sort of benefits or justifications for this um, instrument and then tell us specifically how this instrument was used. So a big mistake that I see people make is that they're like too theoretical and they don't tell us specifically what was done in the study. You must, you must tell us step by step how, you know, this instrument was implemented. So it's the procedures, right? Because in here we're presenting research tools and procedures. So you've got to tell us uh, about the procedures. And then you also want to tell us about, you know, what happened in the interview or what, what happened in whatever research instrument tool you were using, right? Um, sort of like which questions were asked, how long did the interview last, 
um, and so on, right? Um, this, is, this is very, very important, right? So again, just to recap on research tools and procedures, uh, you know, present the tool, you can define it and point out the advantage why it's appropriate for your study. Number two, present the exact procedures, how this tool was implemented, and then tell us a little bit more about, for example, the questions that were asked in that interview. And then moving to the, to the next um, element, we, in here they talk about transcribing the interviews. Um, I don't think this is obligatory or necessary in, in most research papers. Very often this is just included as one sentence, where in the data analysis you will say that the interviews were transcribed by the researcher or something like this, right? Um, but in here, you know, the, there's a more information about it, um, specifically because a, a specific tool was used, right? And there's some justification for using that tool, um, so that's why there is a separate section. Um, but really, I want to go into data analysis, right? Because that's a very important section and a section that must be included in a, in a research paper or in a, a thesis, right? In here, it is very detailed. As you can see, there are subsections in here as well uh, for exactly how everything was, um, was done, right? Now, this isn't necessary. It doesn't have to be that length. It all, all just depends on how you analyze your data, right? It is very common just to literally have one paragraph on this. But if your method of analyzing the data is much more complicated, then you need more than one paragraph. You just basically, what you need to do is, you know, present the, the data analysis method, right? And then go step by step through the whole procedure of analyzing your qualitative data. That's basically what you need to do. So if the procedure is fa was fairly lengthy and complicated, or maybe you used more than one data analysis technique, then that's why this section can be uh, lengthy. And one other thing that I would point out is using references in here. So whenever you, know, you for example, want to justify why you use this data analysis technique, why this is uh, appropriate for your study, why you use this research approach, this sampling technique, refer to um, previous research because this helps you to justify your own choices. So to sum up, if you're presenting the methodology, you need participants, research tools and procedures, and data analysis techniques. These are the three main sections that you definitely want to include. And if you want more personalized guidance, if you want to publish papers regularly in top journals in your field, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. The link is right below this video. We're going to identify your main challenges, help you to clarify your goals, and also prepare a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to schedule that consultation is right below this video.